So now I want to look at the essence of banking. That in our case here, banks create the market for those who save money and those who borrow. So that's the essence of what banks themselves do. And banks then organize their activities according to the following T-chart, which would be familiar to those of you who um, are somewhat familiar with accounting. These assets um, essentially consist of cash. This cash is what's held in the vault and loans, the liabilities, are deposits. So when you think of assets and liabilities, just think of things that, like, what would the bank have to rely on if it needed to raise cash? And who could go to the bank to try to get cash? So under assets, certainly the cash they have, they could use to pay off certain loans. But they also have loans, which have a value, right? Because they could sell those loans to someone else, they could they ask those who borrowed the money to pay it back a little bit earlier. Um, those would all be assets. Now, the liabilities would be who do they owe money to. So, right, depositors have, you know, you know, statements and whatnot that prove they deposited cash. So that's obviously a liability um, of the bank, that the bank would have to pay those things. Now... Banks are fractional reserve institutions. What that means is that banks hold only a fraction of deposits. So basically, banks make money by um, not keeping all of your money that you deposit in the bank. Instead, what they do is they, um, right, they try to lend out as much as possible. Now, how much can they lend out? Well, that's why there is a required reserve ratio. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, the required reserve ratio is the minimum percentage of deposits that must be held. This is determined typically by the central bank um, in the economy. So in this case, it's set by the Federal Reserve. What this, the reason why there's a required reserve ratio is that bank failures are caused by everyone demanding their deposit at the same time. Um, sometimes you may see this referred to as also a bank run. Um, and so typically in a bank run, um, everyone runs to the bank to try to get out their deposit because they think the bank doesn't have enough money. Well, no bank has enough money. Um, that's the whole point. Banks lend out all of their, uh, as much as much of their deposits as they can so that they can earn money. Um, the reason why most of us in the United States don't worry about these things is that we do have what's called a FDIC, which stands for the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Basically, this business, this company, uh, this insurance agency, basically within the government, insures your deposits up to $250,000, which basically means as long as you have $250,000 or less in the bank, you never have to worry about losing your money. The federal government, through the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, would make back, um, would give you back all of your money that was lost. So now, 
the question that rises out of all of this is, is how do banks create money? Which may seem like an odd question to you. But in reality, what we see here is that um, they are meaningfully going to be creating money. And I'm going to do that, I'm going to show you that uh, through an example here. Let's say I find $10,000. $10,000 that, you know, um, basically is new money. Then, let's say I deposit the money. So the question is going to be is, um, how does this work through the system? Let's say that I bank at the Bank of Hawaii. Then in this very first step, here's my assets and liabilities. There'll be $10,000 in cash, right, because I'll take the cash to the bank. And the liabilities will be that there's a $10,000 deposit, right, because now I have a checking account that says it has $10,000 in it. Then, the bank lends the money. Because, right, banks, again, are in the business of lending out money. Let's say that the required reserve ratio, just to keep things easy here, let's say that the required reserve ratio is 10%, which would basically mean that the bank is required to keep 10% of all um, deposits. And the bank is going to lend out this money, which means that then for one moment in time, what we would say is that their um, that ten thousand dollars cash is going to be broken down into two parts. Nine thousand dollars is going to be called excess reserves. One thousand dollars is going to be called required reserves. And I'm still going to have the $10,000 as a deposit. Then the loan is made. Once the loan is made, then my excess cash is converted into a loan. So now my assets look like $1,000 in required reserves. This could be held as cash, basically, within my bank vault. And I've made a $9,000 loan, because that's 90% of that original 10000 Remember, I'm only required to keep 10%. And I still have my $10,000 deposit. Then... My loan check is cash, right? Because typically when a bank makes a loan, there's a check that's written out, and that check is then cashed by whoever you gave that check to, which is now going to mean the following, is that my liabilities are now going to be $19,000 because I have my $10,000 deposit plus someone just cashed at the bank their $9,000 check. So $10,000 plus $9,000. Now my assets <coughs> equal $1,000 in required reserves, my $9,000 loan, and $9,000 as a basically, we could call it vault cash.
then the bank lends out excess reserves from the loan. Which means now that my assets are now, uh, let's see, 8100 dollars $1900 in required reserves. How did I get nineteen hundred? That's the original one thousand plus ten percent of nine thousand. Right, because now I have to with that new check of nine thousand dollars, I have to hold ten percent of that. Plus eighty one hundred in required reserves. And my nine thousand dollar loan. And on the liability side, I still have my $19,000 in deposits. And um, everything should kind of equal out here. Then, another loan is made. Because now I'm going to lend out the 8100 which now means that my assets equal $1,900 in required reserves. $17,100 in loans because I've turned all my required reserves into loans and on my liability side I have $19,000 in deposits and now this process is going to keep going on because now there's going to be a um, $8,100 loan check that's going to be deposited and so on and so forth what's the total amount that happens here is what's called the simple deposit multiplier which is equal to 1 over the required reserve ratio which in this case is 1 over 0 0.1 which is equal to 10 which means that if we took our 10,000 original dollars we would multiply it by 10 to get a total change in the money supply of $100,000. That's pretty significant. Now, what this does assume, it is assumes two things. One, every check is basically cashed or turned into the bank and that banks hold no excess reserves, that banks are lending out all that they can. In real life, these assumptions don't always hold true, but for these examples, they will.